me for leaps from Mark Plunkett. And, and Paul Keane, he's gone to midfield yeah. as well, and he's just got the ball right from the throw-in. Good start from him from the St. Mary's man. Paul Keeney trying to make that early penetrating run, plays it across there towards Flynn, who was pushed right up in the lead from attack early on. Opportunity here for Keith Byrne, just outside the 21-metre line. Byrne goes to ground, a number of Carlo players around him. Ball squirms free, and despite Mark Plunkett trying to keep it in play, it's Carlo who come away with it. Jamie Clark is there, number it's 12, plays it to Jordan Morrissey. Back to Clark it goes. He's uh, right in the middle of the field at the moment as he kicks this one in right-footed, down there towards the Carlo full forward line, and the ball has been won for them inside there. It looks as if it's their number, uh, Connor Crowley, number 15, who has the ball. He's definitely playing as well. Transfers it back out to the full forward. They're about 40 metres out from the Leitrim goal. Ball seemed to hit maybe the referee going through. There was one or two players just waiting to see what was going to come from that. In the end, Carlo hold on to it. Shane Clark is one of the players who they've brought in as a late inclusion, as is Colm Holton. He's wearing number 18. Kicks the ball in left footed. Dangerous one. Drops it around the goal. Maxwell was out of the goal for it and Leitrim had enough of players back there to clear it and eventually it comes out to Connor Reynolds who gives it to Paul Keeney. Leitrim now surviving Carlo's first attack in the game. Spraying the ball across to the far side of the field. Remember they got Paddy Maguire playing for them for the 100th time this afternoon. Leitrim have worked the ball up along the main stand side of the field over there towards the direction of Mark Plunkett wearing number 21 in a late inclusion and one of uh, four changes from the Leitrim starting 15 that was made a little bit earlier on. All the time possession with the team in green and gold as they attack down towards the castle down towards the castle car end in the opening half. Keith Byrne, he's going to strike it off the left boot in a course on Keith Byrne, but that was always tailing out to the point with that you'd normally expect Keith to get them you know, in, a, in a heartbeat. Two players wrestling miles away from the ball, and that's continuing off the ball all the time there, but the referee decides to allow play to continue. Linesman might have had a look at it and could come back to it later. Dara Curran is the Carlo number four. Plays it here to their number 12, Jamie Clark, just about inside the Leitrim half of the field. Switches it back here to Mickey Bambrick. Bambrick wearing number three, begins to tentatively come up to midfield and plays the ball back to Jamie Clark, and out and comes to Niall Hickey, the midfielder, moving in towards that midfield area. Carlo having some good possession here. Part of his number is partly blocked with mud there, which I believe Jordan Morrissey, but we can definitely make him out from here, and Carlo spray the ball across to the far side of the field, the old stand side of the field. They're attacking down towards the Rosebank shopping end of the ground here in the opening half, the big, long, diagonal ball that lands on the edge of the Leitrim Square, Paul Keeney, or edge of the Leitrim D. Paul Keeney trying to get a hand to it, but it's back with Carlo again. Here's Dara Foley just outside the 45-metre line. Oh. A monster of a shot from Dara Foley, and oh, the yeah. umpire is sprinting at this stage, and we We've only played three and a half minutes, but that was some score, Martin. Oh, it was a magnificent score, and it, it, it came about from a, a long diagonal ball from Colin Hulton in around the Leitrim goal mouth that wasn't dealt with by two or three Leitrim players. The full forward there, Dara Foley, managed to get a hand on the ball, pop it back to somebody, and loop back around to take their turn. It was a wonderful score indeed by Foley. They lead by one point to no score. Carlo, of course, the team that were going well until last weekend, just like Leitrim, had that, uh, well, minor, well, major block for them, I suppose, down in the game against Leitch, but Leitch one of the promotion favourites, or so we thought, until Wicklow beat them last night. It's wide open in Division 4 of the Allianz League. Carlo have possession here. They've walked the ball back out to Dara Kern again, who's been busy since the game has got underway. Josh Moore is wearing number 10. Plays it through the centre to Jordan Morrissey. Loses possession to Mark Plunkett. Well done by Plunkett to win it back. Now Keith Byrne is scampering out towards the 45 metre line and inside it to win possession for Leitrim. Up to the Carlo 21 he goes. St- main terrace side of the field. Gets the pass away there towards uh, Tom Pryor who's in as well from the start today. Shot coming in but it's uh, dropping out to there. And our coverage is brought to you by McManus Pharmacy's new line in Manor Hamilton. Quick kick out of Kieran Cunningham, the Carlo goalkeeper, gets the ball uh, back once again from his teammates now as he switches the focal point of the attack from left to right, the Carlo right, as they set off on another attack, leading by a point to no score. Way back there is Ross Dunphy for them in possession. They've held on to so much of the ball here, Carlo, in the opening half, building up short and looking confident as the game goes on. Josh Moore has directed a lot of play for them. He's looked lively in the early exchanges as well. They have the ball about 50 metres out now 
from the league from Goal, stringing a number of passes together. Carlo in their familiar multicoloured jerseys there as it comes across here to Jamie Clark on this near side of the field. Inside the 45 metre line, Maxwell has come out, breaks the ball down and it comes back in there with a shot. Dara Foley was sharp, he was onto the ball and from a very difficult angle he tried to find the net where maybe he'd have been better off just listing that ball over the bar but it rattled just the outside of the post and went wide. Dara Maxwell got a good kick out away there to Mark Tiffley that enabled Leitrim to set themselves up now for the counter attack and here they come from the restart bringing the ball up to the opposition 45 metre line with Dara Rooney opportunity here for him to impress his jersey was tugged a little bit I thought as he kicked out when the sh- shot dropped short in any case Kieran Cunningham the goalkeeper was there to take it ball sprayed all the way across here towards this near side of the field another one of the Car- Carlos subs that has uh, come in there I think was number 22 Eric Malloy who was introduced early in the uh, exchanges here of the game another one of the late inclusions for them now they've worked the ball down towards the direction of Kieran Moran wearing numbers 26 we expected him to operate in the middle of the field a foul spotted by the referee a free into Carlo and they'll be quite happy with how they've settled here into this game ball kicked across to Jamie Clark again attacking down the lift spotted that Mickey Bambrick had ghosted in behind the Leitrim cover 21 metres out from goal they didn't pick him up the ball has been recycled back here to Callum Hulton once again back out it comes to Jamie Clark just outside the Leitrim 45 metre line kicks it there to Jordan Morrissey and he in turn plays it immediately out there towards Shawnee Bambrick and Carlo continue to push bodies forward here they're working it up towards Kieran Moran once again a lot of spells of possession here for Carlo. Leitrim have to be very disciplined, very patient in their build-up here to try and maybe get some possession back. Trailing by one point to no score as Carlo played the ball out to Mickey Bambrick again. About to hit the Leitrim 45 in her line. Right-footed delivery from Bambrick. Down it goes between the 21 and the 14. Carlo retained pers- possession. Loose enough uh, pass coming back out there for them. Again, they've got the opportunity. Here's their number 18. That's Colum Hulton. And his shot dropped short. And is taken by Darren Maxwell, the Leitrim goalkeeper, who almost went down on his knees to take that one, but did well. Gets it across to Shane Quinn as Leitrim come on the counter-attack. Shane Quinn right into open space to Jack Heslin, the man from Mark Letra. Started in the full forward line, but operating a little bit deeper now. Heslin taking on his marker. Gets the ball in right footed delivery. This is going to drop about inside the 14-metre line. Byrne Wilkin would have been the intended target and Keith Byrne turns and shoots when Byrne opens his account and the teams are level a point for Leitrim a point for Carlo to 8 minutes and 13 seconds gone in the opening half yeah Baldy need the score for Leitrim just to get them settled into the game John you just got that feeling that Leitrim are just a little bit nervous and it was a good diagonal ball from Jack Heston into the space Keith does what Keith does best turning his man off the left foot lovely score excellent score indeed teams level at a point apiece as Carlo come on the attack again they won't be duly bothered about that the breeze you could probably argue maybe in Leitrim's uh, uh, favour ever so slightly in the opening half but that's a matter of discussion Leitrim have managed to win themselves a free there yeah I get the feeling the breeze is actually blown down a- a- against the normal prevailing breeze blown across the field over to the far corner so it might be favouring Carlo just a little bit now yeah it's an interesting one it's a difficult one to describe it just seems to be going very much I suppose yeah but the flags down on the sideline I was looking at the ones in behind the goal there that yeah. just seem to be ever so slightly almost well they weren't going yeah. diagonally they're almost going straight across the field at the minute it's a difficult one to judge Paddy Maguire kicks the ball inside there immediately holds up his hands he was disappointed how that one went and it comes to the opposition number two Liam Roberts as Carlo break once again here their full back is Mickey Bambrick slots the ball over on the far side of the field Carlo in possession teams are level point to piece here in an absolutely crucial game in division four of the Allianz Football League and our coverage as always of the Leitrim game is brought to you by McMahon his pharmacies, New Line Manor Hamilton. Shawnee Bambrick brings the ball past halfway on the main stand side of the field. Stops and checks and looks inside to the centre and spots there that he's got a player completely unmarked who is Kieran Moran. Moran playing the ball towards the direction of Jordan Morrissey and he's overcarried it and that's going to be a free out for Leitrim. Yeah, I think he put his arm around Connor, Connor Farrell there but Keith Byrne has got the ball 60 yards from goal now. Here he goes, he's inside the 45 metre line, he's eating up the ground, he gets the right footed shot oh, away on a quick delivery from Keith Byrne but unfortunately he goes... Overlap and run, it might have been the better option there instead of shooting from 40 yards. You know, it just seems that the goals below here seem to be a little bit more difficult to shoot into than normal. Seems to be the case for the forward line at the moment and that breeze is obviously a contributing factor to that here come Carlo again 
looking to very much get a foothold here in the opening half. They're getting a lot of possession. Kieran Moran again winning it there. Ten and a half minutes in. Ball squirms free. 50 metres. Yeah, you're dead right, Martin. He's going to go short, though, this time, believe it or not. Lands in the ball. Poor pass from him. Landed outside the 21 metre line, but Connor Reynolds is there to tidy up proceedings for Leach. I thought Foley would have a go for a score there, and myself as well, considering that he landed that monster point, the opening score of the game, a little bit earlier. However, a let off for Leach, who have possession in, as they try and walk the ball through the middle now at the minute. They're level here at the moment, and Leacham lose the ball in a crowded midfield area, and it squirms away. Coming back to try and get it as Dara Rooney there. There. Nice attempt for Andy Moran's team. Speaking of Andy Moran, he's down on the sideline, as passionate as ever, up and down and patrolling along the line and barking in instructions to his team. As he watches here, Leitrim come on the attack. Tom Pryor has the ball. Main stand side of the field. A poor pass from Tom Pryor, easily cut out by Jordan Morrissey. One or two little errors in the Leitrim performance so far as Carlo break again with Ross Dunphy over on this near side of the field. Plays it there again towards Jordan Morrissey, who very much is the, the quarterback, you could say, on the Carlo team. A lot of the play going through him as he takes the return. Be, uh, coming up towards the Leitrim 45 metre line now. And the ball played in here to Ross Dunphy. He's inside the 45 metre line. He has taken the free. He'll almost be on the edge of the D by the time he kicks that one. In it goes from Dara Foley. Second point of the match from him. One from play. We've kicked two or three balls in. We've seen this in the last couple of games, John, where we've been a little bit wasteful with the ball. That's a great take in the middle of the park for Carlo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jordan Morrissey was the man that made it. He really is one of the more impressive players for them. Everything going through him at the minute. Jamie Clark now brings the ball forward along the Carlo left down towards the Rosebank shopping centre end as Carlo attack here in the opening half. Morrissey again unsurprisingly involved. He's been afforded a lot of space, you could argue as well. Moore now up to the 45 metre line and beyond. That's the lead from 45 as Carlo hold on to possession. Kieran Moran comes across to take it. Moran now moving and goes to ground. Nobody really near him there. And the referee spotted the pickup, I think, on the ground as the ball was touched. And it's going to be a free out for Leitrim. Carlo not retreating bodies back quickly enough. And the referee lets Leitrim eventually take the free. It goes to Jack Heslin. Heslin again going to trouble Carlo on the terrace side of the field. He cuts into the 45 metre line. The right foot of delivery. Down again here towards Tom Pryor. This looks better. No, it's gone out to the wrong side. He snatched that a little bit so far. Yeah, and again, a good diagonal ball again from Jack Heston into the space. And really and truly from that range, you know, just about 15, 16 yards out, Leighton really should have done a lot better. Should have done a little bit better indeed, you feel. Ball is broken out there again for them now at this stage. Leitrim and again they played in towards Jack Heston. He's playing well this afternoon. The man from Gartletra goes into him. But he looks like a man that's going to kick it short. Indeed he is, and he's going to go for Tom Pryor again, who's winning, as we mentioned, quite a lot of primary possession here. Bark out it comes to Plunkett, attacking again, cutting in from the terrace side, onto the right boot, central position, long range. What happened last week? Just going to say, could well maybe maybe a, a slight hangover after what took place down in Chadwick's Wexford Park a week ago. Leitrim trail here by two pints to one. Stopwatch, as Martin told us here, we've got about 16 minutes now at this stage, and Carlo in the ascendancy by one pint. They have possession. They're moving the ball through the channels again. Jordan Morrissey, again that main playmaker for them, switches it across to the far side. Ball comes down to Kieran Moran, and now they quickly work it up towards the Leitrim 40 fitness from him so far. The Kilbride player steps up, kicks the ball right footed, it's going to drop short, breaking ball, and Leitrim are there to take it, and Shane Quinn anticipated where the breaking ball was going to land, and now they move it up to Mark Plunkett, attacking again on the Leitrim left as they come forward. Good play from Leitrim here, on the, again on the counter-attack, but they carry the ball into the tackle, and the referee see nothing wrong with it, and Carlo have it back. Paul, was it Paul Keeney that was yeah. trying to go through there? It was, and he just lost the ball as he carried it into the tackle. They're a big, strong, powerful team, this Carlo side of course to Turlock O'Brien Carlo rising a few years back now Niall Carew in charge of the team for his, in his uh, third season the former Sligo manager the man on the sideline for Carlo this afternoon Leitrim have possession back once again it switched way across there to Jack Heslin a good outlet for Leitrim possession and transition from defence to attack today he's going to kick this one in again towards Tom Pryor he's winning a lot of ball can he provide the finish this time fist the ball in this time and Tom Pryor a couple of great passes inside to create opportunities so if Leitrim can just capitalise on that now. 
two points apiece. Stopwatch telling us at this stage now that we have played, what, 19 minutes in the opening half. Here comes Jack Hesselin again onto the right boot. Decides to shoot himself. Oh, points to two. Yeah, I mean, one of Jack Heston's fortes is his ability to run and carry the ball. And he ran at the Carlo defence that time, creating the opportunity for himself. And, you know, I, I, in the past I've said sometimes Jack hits the ball a little bit too hard on that par- on that occasion. A lovely little stroke of the ball over the bar, John. Oh, just poetry in motion to see the way he struck that one over the bar. Leitrim leading by three points to two. Their best spell of the game so far. They're beginning to settle down and maybe shake off some of the cobwebs that have been there from Wexford Park for last weekend. Good performance indeed from Andy Moore and Smith in the last couple of minutes. Here come Carlo. Look dangerous. Shawnee Bambrick again in possession. Switches it over to the far side of the field. And now it comes back all the way in here towards Jamie Clark. Moving and venturing into the leech of half of the field. Checks his run. Poor ball back and coming in to get the tackle into Rose Aiton Flynn and Leitrim have done really well to get the ball to that man again. Heslin on the move. Aiton Flynn is sprinting off his shoulder. Heslin is 21 metres out. Heslin is 14 metres out. Aiton keep bang! And ball! A great piece of play initially from Aiton Flynn. You know, to dispossess the Carlow player, knock that ball free. And Donor in did absolutely the right thing. He spotted Jack Heslin all on his own and he pulled on the ball and gave Jack a free run on goals. Now the two Carlow players backed off Jack Heston and he just slipped the ball as they came to him to keep burn and didn't try to catch it just slipped the ball very calmly into the net to give Leitrim a nice little cushion now yeah brilliant uh, presence of mind from Keith Byrne to finish it but Jack Heston and Aidan Flynn's involvement in that cannot uh, state it highly enough here come Carlo looking to hit back here They've conceded 1-2 now inside the last couple of minutes. They need a score themselves just to settle them down ever so slightly in this game. And again, Leitrim going in, getting the tackles in. Paddy Maguire going in in typical determined fashion over on the far side of the field. But the lift arm of the referee points that it's going to be a free in for Carlo. And they're going to work the ball from the main stand side in again here towards the direction of Niall <coughs> Hickey, one of the players who's operating for them with Kieran Moore in that uh, central role. They work the ball inside the 45-meter line now. Almost a little bit of soccer skill being played here and there's a soccer dive if ever I see it here in Advanced Money Park Sean McGibber to Jamie Clark he should be on dancing on ice with a dive like that Ah uh, yeah I mean uh, on two occasions there he lost control of the ball and he tried to win himself a free it was never on the referee rightly spotted the you know the, the, the little dive. bit of yeah, dive, dive. Well, absolutely <laughs> you wouldn't see it in a water sport at the Olympics the way he dived for that one and the referee <laughs> thankfully didn't buy it here comes Paddy Maguire on the attack for Leach a ball comes across here now to Paul Keeney they've walked it up to the 40 back a few feet that familiar run, up he comes, he'll strike it off the right, 45 metres out, remember, oh. straight as a die, absolutely brilliant. Some interest place there for another week. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, it's been a good, it's been a good 5-10 minutes, for, oh, there's a throw ball, all the, oh, well, the referee has given a, a foul against Tom Pryor for a pull of the jersey. Yeah, but, uh, one goal and four, by the way, to two points. Yeah, it's been a good five or ten minutes for Leitrim. You know, they've really come back into the game after a nervous start in which they kicked five wides. Last five attacks have yielded four scores. 23 minutes gone here in the opening half. Leitrim leading 1-4 to 2. Carlo attacking again. Still their dangerous team, Carlo. Bambrick brings the ball up to the edge of the Leitrim D. His run is checked. He gets it onto the right boot. This could be a score for Bambrick. And uh, Maxwell, the Leitrim goalkeeper, fists the ball straight up in the air. Fists it out. None too convincing an opportunity here for Carlo. They're about 14 metres out. They manage to recycle the ball. Shot comes in again. And Leitrim's defence is there to take it. Which is almost like watching a man play volleyball the way Darren Maxwell dealt with that one, Martin. It certainly was. The ball landed on the crossbar, which was very difficult for Darren Maxwell to take. But eventually, Leitrim got that ball clear. And we're on the attack now in good on position. On the attack now again in an excellent position. And they've got the ball across here to Mark Plunkett on this near side of the field. Oh, look at that. Beautiful effort. Mark Plunkett, beautiful point. Oh, lovely score off the outside of the boot. Really was a thing of beauty. But it was all the hard work that was done before that involving Dara Rooney and Conor Reynolds to get the ball eventually in as far as Mark Plunkett. And very calm from a difficult angle, just stroke that ball over, over the bar lovely now to give Leitrim a six point lead yeah one goal and five for Leitrim two points for Carlo the scoreline telling us at the moment here in Advant Money Park Sean McGermott and we're 24 and a half minutes into the opening half ball comes across here for Carlo's number 12 who is Jamie Clark went on that theatrical dive just a couple of moments ago let's not forget ball back again with Kieran Moran now here's that he had the one wide so far that was the ball that came off the post you know for the goal so uh, the goal opportunity but uh, they've been very economical when they do get the ball up there but the Leitrim defence has stood very stu- uh, strong throughout the game Mark Diffley uh, Shane Quinn you know Conor Reynolds Paddy Maguire they're all doing very well in there 
One goal and five to three points at the moment of the ball. Walked down oh, again to the lead and full forward that line. Coming in from the right corner, striking it off the left and just about it off on it to send it in and over the bar. And I would imagine we'll definitely see him coming in at some stage. So he shouldn't feel too, you know, aggrieved that, I mean, th this is going to happen, you know. Here we do, like, we still have we still have uh, Ryan O'Rourke to come back into this team yet. And bear in mind as well, we're playing one of our better forwards throughout the start of the league so far. Jordan Reynolds is a wing back at the moment. Uh, yeah, so they're all fair points. The forward options very much been developed by Andy Bourne and his management team here at the moment. Leitrim's defence not doing too bad either in case they feel that we're leaving them out. Ball played again to Tom Pryor. He's way outside his own 45 metre line. He gets this one and he kicks it in a diagonal and across the field. Well taken by Dara Rooney. Love off the right. He'll almost be on the edge of the D as he strikes it in. Dara Rooney. Goalkeeper oh. gets a hand to it in between that and the crossbar. A combination of both. The ball comes off the post or off the bar and Carlos survive. Opportunity now for them to build from the back again. Somewhat shell shocked by the concession of those who scores lately. 1-6-3 but they're still feeling they're very much in this game as Colin Holton again brings the ball or Holton brings the ball forward again long delivery down to the Carlo full forward line it goes breaking ball going in to try and gather it as Ross Dunn. come from him and he steps up now and strikes this one off the right accurate player textbook kick from Dara Foley and the umpire comes in and goes for the flag to signal that 48 and minutes and 11 seconds gone in the second half kick out taken again brilliantly dispatched and well taken by Connor Farlow over on this near side of the field and fairness to Darren Maxwell doing well in his kickouts today notable improvement not alone from last week maybe from one of the previous games as well that I witnessed against Waterford Dara Rooney attacking again up past the 45 metre line he's coming into the game nicely up to the 21 just trying to get a shot away but it was well blocked by Carlos Liam Roberts who came back there like a good cornerback and made the interception in that telling sector of the field Dara Curran is the number four brings it up to the 45 metre line still Curran moving the ball inside and gives it there to the man wearing number 18 Colum Hulton ball goes across to the far side Carlo have looked dangerous on the counter-attack on their own 65 metre line the ball walked up now to Shawnee Bambrick taking on the Leitrim player really pacey run this he's up to the opposition 14 metre line look at him go Reynolds is trying to get back and uh, win the ball from the Carlo player and I suppose the referee looked at that as pulling the player uh, pulling the ball out of the player's possession I suppose if it was a tighter game you'd hear the crowd roaring a little bit more but I mean this game is still far from over it's only a four point gap at the moment and Leitrim really have to kick on when they do have the, uh, uh, the ascendancy Niall McKenna from the county of Monaghan. The Farnham County is the match referee today as we watch Dara Rooney attack again down along this near side to Jack Hessel. Oh. Off the right boot. Beautiful. The very minute it left his boot. Oh, a lovely stroke again from Jack <coughs> Hessel over the bar. Just exactly what Leitrim needed. Beautiful point from Heston. Best game I've seen him have in the league so far this year for Leitrim. Good outlet, great man to run at the ball as well and a great man to distribute it. He really is playing well there. Gert Letra's Jack Heston. Here comes Carlo uh, on the attack here now themselves. Working the ball quickly into the Leitrim half of the field here. We're five minutes left in the opening half in case you're just joining us. Our coverage brought to you by McManus Pharmacies, New Line Manor Hamilton. As always, our big match sponsors of Leitrim's GAA here on Ocean FM. Dara Curran is the Carlo number four the ball was kicked back into his vicinity after Carlo had moved about 20 yards further up the field Mickey Bambrick now brings it forward between halfway and the Leitrim 65 metre line in over the back of Paddy Maguire it's won by Ross Dunphy opportunity for Dunphy onto the left boot pa um, Darren Maxwell goes near hand came around to tackle him but it came across his shoulder the referee deemed it to be a foul which it was and it's a, another score for Carlo 7 to 6 points now the scoreboard reads kick out been taken by Leitrim and they're away again attacking along the far side of the field but they've lost possession Carlo have it back here pull the Carlo player down a lot of referees could have deemed that to be a, to be a, a, a black card strictly speaking by the letter of the law yeah but the letter of the law indeed and Carlo now have walked the ball through a number of players including Kieran Bourne to within 45 metres of the Leitrim goal opportunities again here for Colm Hulton he'll kick this one off the lift Colm Hulton drops it short and Darren Maxwell for the second time in a row comes out and gets his body behind the Ball, but it spills off him ever so slightly. That's maybe one or two signs of a little bit of nerves you could maybe think from the Leitrim goalkeeper. Let's hope it, it, it uh, quite pattern of play quickly vanishes and Maxwell who's a good goalkeeper for Bandamore, Sean O'Hessland uh, still is keeping a clean sheet. One goal and seven to six possession in the Carlo half of the field again and they come forward with it once more. Kieran Bourne has won a lot of possession for them in that sector. Jordan Morrissey has played well in two for them. And now they try to carry the ball into the tackle here. Kira Moran and it gave me a free here for the Carlo team once again. And Dara Foley is kicking the ball in. And Dara Foley has kicked another one over the bar. And now with the Leitrim lads at half time, he's just got to tell them if you give away a free, keep your mouth shut. Don't even look at this referee. He's highly sensitive.
highly, highly sensitive. Well, that, he has given that free to Leitrim on this occasion. On this so, occasion, exactly, yes. Well, that's good. That's good from a Leitrim perspective. Apologies to Andy Carlo listeners who's tuned their way today. Leitrim have up the ball into Keith Byrne here. Jack Heslin, 40 metres out from goal. In comes Jack Heslin. Oh, brilliant goal! Oh, seven points. Carlo really struggling with the diagonal ball. On that occasion, it was a long ball into space. Tom Pryor came for the ball. What a presence of mind. He flicked the ball on. He was never going to win that ball because it was too high. He flicked it on and Keith Byrne spotted the run of Jack Hessen off his shoulder and just popped it to him. And what a finish from Jack Hessen. Down into the bottom corner. Great goal. Gives Leitrim that six-point gap again. Oh, absolutely. Brilliant goal indeed for Leitrim. Just what they needed. But here come Carlo. You're always vulnerable when, they score, when you score one, they say. Need to be a little bit careful here, Leitrim, as Dunphy gets possession. 14 metres out from the Leitrim goal, dancing and weaving and tormenting the defence. And the shot comes in and goes back off the upright. Who's alert to it? Carlo, it looks as if we're going to get there first. Carlo player wins the ball, goes to ground, and Leitrim win the free out. Leitrim win the free out. It remains two goals and seven to seven points. And the stopwatch tells us that we're into injury time. 35-43. How yep. much injury time is going to be added on? It hasn't been put up yet, John. I see the fourth official standing up, but they haven't signalled how much injury time. But Leitrim on the attack now again through Conor Reynolds. Conor Reynolds bringing the ball forward for Leitrim. Heston's goal was absolutely beautifully dispatched. Brilliant goal indeed um, from him. And that's one that def- Leitrim definitely needed. Keith Burns scored a lovely goal a little bit earlier on too when he fisted the ball to the back of the net after a great team play. The ball is going in towards Burn again. Those two Carlo bit around him. Burn ended up on the deck. He looks as if he picked up a little bit of an injury. The referee is frantically waving to say that there's going to be no foul conceded there and it comes across here again to Ross Dunphy. Dunphy bringing the ball forward, plays it outside him towards the direction of Josh Moore. Dunphy is on his backside sitting, watch frantically pointing to his defence to get bodies back. He anticipated when the ball was going to go at the former footballer of the year. Josh Moore has possession there for Carlo and they're 45 metres out from the Leitrim goal a few feet in from the sideline on the main stand side of the field. Bringing the ball forward here once again is going to be uh, the number 25 there for Carlo. Shane Clark plays it in a diagonal ball that goes from left to right and now Carlo are moving in here. Josh Moore is up and again. Uh, uh, you do, I, I don't want to be sound complaining about but I mean. Confirm that. So that game, of course, started at uh, 1 o'clock. So Sligo picked up the two points away over in McGovern, Ryslip Park. I tell you, the last round of the league, let's hope it comes down to it for both Sligo and Leitrim. Wouldn't be wonderful if the two of them could get promotion. It's still possible. But here come Carlo now on the attack. Early doors in the second half for them. Josh Moore setting them in motion here. Gives the ball down towards Ross Dunphy on the Leitrim 21-meter line. Struggling to try and get the ball under control there. Carlo still have it and they managed to sw- recycle the ball out from the rook before the shot comes in. And again Maxwell comes out and again he spills one and gathers it in the second time of asking. Goes to ground. The ball a little bit scrappy in there and Maxwell has it again. It's been Dara Maxwell that picked the ball off the ground so Dara Foley dispatches that ball over the bar. Dara Foley, seven of the eight have come from freeze. That's how prolific he's been but a lot of them have been fairly soft enough freeze you could say from a Leitrim perspective to give away. They've got their kick out away and fairness to Dara and Maxwell where his handling has looked a little bit suspect. His kick outs have been excellent today. Shane Quinn was the man who took that kick out from them. Leitrim on the attack once again now. The diagonal ball that has troubled Carlo all afternoon goes in here towards Keith Byrne. He has the ball, he goes oh. to ground the Carlo oh, man around referee. him. He's using both hands there as he was pushing it in at the back of Keith Burns. First shot at the post in the second period. Up he comes, Burns strikes the possession before delivering the diagonal ball that caused all the trouble. Here comes the kick out now from Kieran Cunningham. Lands it down towards this near side of the field. Fists going across there to try and win the ball, and Carlo have it once again in opportunities there for them. Ball eventually played in that side here towards the uh, centre once more. And Carlo now have. Uh, played the ball right across here to their corner forward. This is good play from them as they work the ball in here to Ross Dunphy. Ross Dunphy has the shot from just around about 21 metres out. And the goals have made all the difference here at the moment. Uh, there's a good ball out from Darren Maxwell to start us off again with. Uh, and his Darren's kickouts have been very excellent. good. You know? Excellent. His kickouts have been excellent. Just the only thing that would concern me has been the way one or two balls has hopped off his chest today. And uh, that's maybe something that probably Carlo might be keeping an eye on as well. In any case, the diagonal ball towards Keith Byrne this time fails to materialise realise the levels of success that it had previously in the Carlo full back line are able to win possession back here. Early exchanges of the second half. Stopwatch telling us now we're about three minutes into the new period of play and Carlo again are going to bring the ball from a deep position and coming forward here for them right down under our commentary position. Running at speed here is their number four and that's Dara Curran. Dara Curran plays it down here towards the direction once more of Shane Clark. 
Curran, Clark, 45 minutes out from goal. Clark inside the 45 to Dumphy. He's a real live wire, this guy. Difficult uh, player to get to grips with. Paddy Maguire ran him at the moment, who's playing his 100th game for Leitrim this afternoon. Carlo have walked the ball into an advantageous position. Niall Hickey shoots at the ball. Weeks, you know, I suppose last week mightn't have been as big a help as maybe this week is so far. So hopefully Leitrim keep this going and get the job done in the second half here. Yeah, and indeed to everybody maybe who's feeling a little bit under the weather and listening to our commentary this afternoon at home or in hospital or nursing homes or anywhere around the world. Hopefully we're bringing a little bit of the atmosphere and excitement of Advant Money Park. Joe McDermott to, to you as uh, Leitrim win, lead here against Carlo by two goals and eight to ten points. Leitrim have walked the ball down inside there towards Jack Heslin, who was absolutely a live wire for them. Gets the ball in towards Keith Byrne. Again, there's an opportunity here. Byrne gets the shot away. The angle looked acute. Oh, there's nothing acute for this man. There's another point there so uh, Leitrim down two goals and nine points Carlo ten points yeah what a delivery the ball in again from Jack Heston into a lovely space for Keith got the ball he had a lot to do when he did get the ball and he took on two Carlo players on the outside and had the presence of mind and the calmness just to stroke that ball over the bar steady as it goes here now for Leitrim quite happy with this maintaining that lead and you just feel it's a game that they don't concede the pocket as well and takes out the notebook maybe just to make a little bit of a note for himself about that last particular passage of play Niall Hickey to Dumphy Dumphy edge of the square turns Paddy McGuire Wire, turns him twice, gets it onto the left boot, gets a shot away, and Dumphy has landed another one in. And now look what it did to you there on the last uh, t that last passage of play. Paddy's a good man marker. Would he need a little bit of cover in there? Would you think that uh, maybe nullify Dumphy a bit? Yeah, well they've gone to Dumphy the last couple of times with the ball, so maybe there's just a little bit of a change in strategy from Carlo. Yeah, the ball being kicked in here now by Paul Keeney from uh, Leitrim and St Mary's. Big Gary Owen type kick from Paul Keeney, but only lands for the Carlo men. And they have it back here once again with Kieran Moore and deep in his own half of the field. Coming on the attack now is Josh Moore, runs into the Leitrim man and loses possession as a result of that. A yellow card to Kieran Moore. Kieran Moore, who started the game and now has uh, picked up that yellow card. And the ball played down inside towards the Leitrim full forward line. Jack Heslin tries to get the ball under control. He has it. He's cutting in from the right hand side. Fists the ball across here towards the uh, uh, direction of the upright back out of play it comes once more burn looking to try and go into it and carlo survived well again when heston was cutting in along the near side he fisted the ball inside there and i think it I'm not sure quite who was up there, whether it was uh, maybe Shane Quinn who pushed all the way up, but uh, in any case, the pastors are going across to him, and Carlo have won themselves a free here as they come forward again. It's gone into Dumphy again, and again he's beaten Paddy Maguire. I think Leitrim needs to think about a change there, because uh, this Dumphy man has given Paddy Maguire, who's playing his 100th game for Leitrim this afternoon, he's given him plenty oh. of it at the moment. He has the ball 45 minutes out from goal, manages to squirm the ball away. Dumphy is on the ground, but he's still got the pass away. It comes back to Dumphy again, 45 minutes out from goal, but Leitrim have done well to win it back it was Darren Rooney he was back there Rooney has possession Rooney off the right boot and again it goes towards the direction of Tom Pryor you might have made, made the argue that he, argument that he was been held as he was going for that one but he's got the ball he's trying to skin his marker Pryor plays it back outside him here Byrne involved so too involved here is Paul Keeney Paul Keeney off the left in goes the shot from Paul Keeney beautiful score Carlo defence spread them out wide he slipped the ball back to keep Byrne and Paul sat out in the pocket off his left foot lovely score I don't think I'd be a little bit worried about his the influence that Dumphy is having over Paddy Maguire at the minute. Yeah, at the moment now, the last couple of balls, he's managed to get himself a, a, on the ball and that, but it's very hard when you're being isolated one-on-one -on -one and probably there needs to be a little bit more cover. We can see Shane now. Quinn. Shane Quinn has gone in there Shane now. Quinn just yep. sitting in front of him at the moment. Uh, yeah, they needed to do that. Shane Quinn has gone in there as a, as a kind of a sweeper, as a blanket, uh, an extra bit of a blanket cover there for Leitrim and that's a good move by Andy Moran and the Leitrim management team. The ball has been kicked in here again. Opportunities for Carlo to chase after it there. The man racing in, I think, a new football and is out on the 21 meter line and is going to go short at the kick out and indeed find Shane Quinn and Leitrim once more now we're going to walk the ball down here towards this near side of the field to Jordan Reynolds wearing 15 but operating oh, deep and oh, Reynolds oh look at the tackle oh. club man of my own and St Ronan he's here today wouldn't mind having a chat with him about this guy after it and Andy was the free is kicked in there once again here by the Carlo full the football is the freeze that, that's all that's keeping Carlo in this game oh this keep of the minute absolutely crazy decision there but in any case Leitrim have won the ball again and it comes back out here uh, towards Darren Rooney he's playing well the Leitrim half forward line have contributed well to the game so far Rooney momentarily lost it but it comes to Keith Byrne off the lift in it goes from Keith Byrne Ah, oh, beauty another beauty 11 points for Carlo and you know something you pay the admission fee alone every Sunday to come in and watch for Hamilton big thank you to John McManus I'm sure he's here so far keeping an eye on this he was sightseeing down in Wexford last Sunday for Ronald down along with him the referee awarded the free keeper free just uh, sprinted forward 7 yards onto the 14 yard line it's like he's auditioning for Dancing with Stars or something at the minute now <laughs> I've never seen a more theatric looking Gaelic football referee he's absolutely he's got all the movements there he'd remind you for all intents and purposes as a continent 
incidental oh, soccer three. referee. He's got to fishing like this. Anything is possible. Here comes the free, and it's going oh, to be kicked in way aimlessly there. Poor free, and it's uh, dropping over to this near side of the field. Stays in play about 14 metres out, and back there for Leitrim uh, to try and win it for them. And it comes to Paddy Maguire. He justifies belief. There was one or two controversial sending offs in that game, including Keith Byrne. Yeah, absolutely. They ruled him out with the first game against London. But as it happens, it could be a massive game between Leitrim and Sligo. We've seen how big the Talchin Cup game was where they played here during the summer, two evenly matched teams. But that's somewhere further down the road. There's a lot of obstacles between now and then for both sides. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, both teams um, would be hoping that they can keep winning between now and then. Fair play to Sligo doing the business over in Ryslip a little bit earlier on today. Never an easy place to go. And get a win but as you've heard from Ray Lannan there they've uh, safely navigated that particular challenge here come Carlo now looking to see if they can get something from this are they about to be heading for two defeats in a row probably too early to say yet but they're playing with 14 men here against the 15 of Leitrim Dara Curran one of the players who picked up a yellow card just a couple of moments ago speculatively placed the ball inside there but Leitrim have got men back Dara Rooney was at the most back there deep in any case Leitrim have got a number of players back there to deal with Shane Quinn comes away with it Emblem Mulligan is on the field as well wearing number 19 for Leitrim as Paddy Maguire, the Centurion, is in there. And Paddy Maguire is probably one of the players that's benefited as well from Carlo going a man down. There's a little bit more protection there for him as well as he gets to grips with Dumphy. The ball is played across at Evan Sweeney now for Leitrim. Onto the left boot. Sweeney looks up. A lovely ball. And up. Burnham almost running out of space where it can write down scores from making 1 8. It's just 1 9. It's uh, gone in from Keith Byrne. It certainly is 1 goal and 9 from. Vision like ours, it, it very well may come down to scoring difference at the end. And it's been a much stronger performance from Leitrim in this, in, after the first 15 minutes, in fair 
fairness. Donald Wren benefited from a poor enough kick out there as the ball comes to Evan Sweeney. Sweeney cuts inside. He's 21 metres out. He's 14 metres out onto the right boot this time. Sweeney, who was provider a minute ago, goes for a score. Situations. Now the game has developed into we've got an extra man and you need somebody like Evan with his experience there to bring other players into the game. And he's done that with a plum in this first six, seven minutes since he came on. Here comes Jack Heslin again running. Heslin 21 metres out. Heslin tormenting the defence again. Just loses the ball in the tackle. Manages to get it back to Keith Byrne. Byrne turns a lovely sail of a dummy. Now on to the left. Keith Byrne gets the shot away and again it comes off the upright. Well, those posts are being pounded there inside the last couple of minutes and Carlo are able to get this ball clear. A little bit of respite for them here as they work it out towards the 45 metre line. But in fairness to Leitrim, they're m- Mulligan. Oh, Mulligan has been boxed into the face there by the... I mean, Carlo, this is just to send it into total chaos for Carlo. Yeah, they're down to 12 mid now at this stage. Derek Curran has been sent off for them and, uh, well, that was coming. There's no doubt about it and the, 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 the punch in the face definitely deserved a red card and uh, for the for them then to come into that one well, and see Curran still no, on the it was Jordan Morrissey I Jordan think. Morrissey that got the red card my apologies it was Jordan Morrissey that got the red card two of them had a go at him there and the Leitrim crowd at this stage now Jordan Morrissey had been shown he was a punked as well he was the second player uh, the second yellow card followed by a red and now the ball has got into Keith Byrne it's 2.16 by the way to 12 points and all that's going on it's better give you the score here comes Dara Rooney now to shoot from distance Rooney sending another one in there from a speculative man's going or whatever and uh, the, the actions of Niall Carew there but the actions of um, the player that was sent off there as well Jordan Morrissey to push him and Mulligan into the back after a player after his team being down to 13 men was absolutely ridiculous Martin yeah and I'm just looking at a Carlo player has gone to ground holding his face there I, I, I seen him coming in for the ball he came in to tackle Shane Quinn but I don't think there was anything untoward there I don't think there was anything untoward speaking of 12 Carlo of 12 players on the field it's like 1983 Dublin and Galway when uh, the dozen players from Dublin managed to win the All Ireland that time against Galway way back in 1983. In any case, it's uh, Carlo now who unsurprisingly have brought their goalkeeper out uh, to act as an extra body out the field. Kieran Cunningham gets the ball just about away. And Carlo building from the back again and back there. It's a big day indeed for him, as Martin mentioned as well. And on a day where uh, Paddy Maguire wins his 100th appearance for Leitrim. 216 to 12 points now at the moment. Leitrim looking as if they're going to pick up two more points in the Allianz Football League and a crucial weekend of games for them. This win would be very much uh, keeping them back into the promotion mix here again. And the result last night of Wicklow beating Leash definitely opening up this division considerably. Leash were unbeaten until that moment in time. Beat Sligo in the opening round, remember. And now it's uh, Carlo who come in the attack here. 21 metres out from the Leitrim goal but again they've given the ball away and Dara Rooney is able to get it outside him there to James Rooney and James down towards Keith Byrne who has a little bit of space now look at the overlapping run being made here by McNulty if they can find them with the pass it sort of comes there to Evan Sweeney now it's McNulty on to the right boot in comes the shot this received that ball Carlo Pair under pressure fisted the ball back to him two quick passes later and that's a great take in the middle by Paul Keeney but to strike it from the right Byrne again, just outside the 45 metre line, and again he's hit it absolutely to perfection. Two goals and 18 points for Leitrim, 12 points for Carlo, the scoreline at the moment now on the stop, which will be telling me that we played about uh, 33 minutes, I make it of two minutes of normal time, plus whatever injury time. Al McKenna is going to add on the match referee as Leitrim have possession again, and they're moving it here with Tom Quinn, another one of the players that came in. Also impressive is Evan Sweeney, offers a, another dynamic to the Leitrim attack after coming in there. Some bad for positions between himself and the likes of Tom Pryor. Just wondering, could a Leitrim forward line include both maybe next week, especially with Jordan Reynolds picking up that injury? Probably he would be, well, who has been played in a defensive position, but they do like to play somebody back. But Sweeney and Quinn and uh, Tom Pryor would be two out and out attackers. Ball comes across here to Shane Quinn. Shane Quinn to Paddy Maguire, the Centurion. Talked about giving it to Timlin Mulligan, does give it to Timlin Mulligan. Mulligan's on the 45 metre line. Oh, look at that! <laughs> 45 metres out, just turning off the outside of his book again. No effort, stroke that ball lovely over the bar, and leads him win that ball again in the middle of the park. And they're completely on top, they can really boost the scoring average now as McNulty brings it forward to Mulligan. Subs combining. Mulligan, who Got to know one or two of the Carlo players very well indeed. Shane Quinn now brings it forward up to the 21. Gives it inside there towards Keith Byrne. The hand came in at the back of Keith. Box the ball. Keith Byrne when you need them. Keith Byrne is kicking another one in there. Beautiful point again from uh, Keith Byrne. 
Excellent point from him. Carlo, 12 points. Yeah, I'm just stage. waiting to see what the, what the third or fourth official puts up. But again, good play by, by Paul Keeney in the middle of the park to break that ball and lead from come on the attack again. Mulligan has it. Looks on the 45 metre line. In again that goes from Mulligan. Oh, and, and it's an opportunity now for Evan Sweeney to tag on his second point. No, it's going to jump oh. short into the goalkeeper's arms. Maybe a little bit of a lack of concentration. Just didn't hit it hard enough, but it was taken there by the Carlo goalkeeper. So it remains two goals and 20 to 12 points. Division 4 of the Allianz Football League Sunday Sport here at Ocean FM. Big day again for all the teams in the Northwest region. Carlos goalkeeper is over there on the far side of the field. Here's Kieran Cunningham, well out of his goal as Carlo now with 12 men to Leitrim's 15. And frustration creeps in as they just boot the ball up towards the 45 metre line. And it's back there once again for Leitrim. Well t- uh, controlled by Paul Keeney. It's floated back in over the top. Goalkeeper was out of his goal. Ball goes in and goes over. Will you be able to do that from the same same area next week? Well, it'll be all about recovery and getting the minds sharp and getting the bodies ready for what's going to be another gruelling encounter against. Stoshin McConville's men next Sunday down at Ockram, half past one the starting time for that game and that's immediately when the attention is going to be switching to after this game, we'll have after match reaction, our colleague PJ Leddy is standing by to have a word with Andy Bourne and the aftermath of the game as Carlo come at the attack again the ball is played down here towards the direction of Shane Clark, has the ball inside there, Paddy, Qu- haven't mentioned him too much lately, they just haven't got the ball into him and Dara Foley, he won 221 to 13 points, some of the spectators Spectators are deciding to go beat the rush hour traffic and maybe get home a little bit early as Leitrim cover the counter attack here once again. Moving the ball well now on the far side of the fielder. Leitrim at the moment. Farrell, I think, has made that good run up there. Evan Sweeney has looked so lively. He's going to attempt another audacious effort from outside the 21 metre line.